I really like editing. I love gritting my drums, but I'm probably processing things too much. So I thought the best thing I could do would be to take 25 nail to mix sessions, load them up, and actually compare how aligned everything is. I don't want this to imply that any of these bands are better or worse for being more or less edited, but I do want to better understand exactly what I am hearing and how to replicate my favorite sounds and feels. And hopefully you can watch this and refine exactly what your taste in editing is. Maybe you think you really don't like edits, but find yourself preferring the songs that might be more quantized or vice versa. Well, let's find out with a tier list. So the way I've got this organized, we've got absolutely gridded at the top, a little bit of feel. So there's, you can tell that there's editing. It's mostly natural. There's a little bit of editing, but it's mostly left in place. Virtually no editing. You really can't tell if there are or are not edits. And then uh, no click. A couple of these, a little spoiler warning, have no click. They are just doing their own thing and you really can't edit that at all. So we're gonna start off with Angels and Airwaves. This song is called The Adventure and is mixed by TLA. So let's take a look at what we have here. First, we're gonna be looking at the kick drum. I think this is gonna be the thing that's gonna be the most edited. And if you look right here, you can see it's, it's really close. It's right on there. We've also got snare, bass, and guitars. And I've tried to just isolate these, there's more tracks but I brought these to the top so we can really just look at those. This song did not have DI, so it's harder to tell on the guitars if they're edited, but you can already see that they're not exactly aligned. And right there especially, that is not perfect. When on the drums, we see when there is a flam, the kick and snare happening at the same time, this is kind of a dancey beat, that the flams are left intact. So if it's not a flam, Dead on. If it is a flam, we're leaving it a little bit. We're kind of like splitting the difference. See like even right here, that little that little fill snare is dead on. A little bit of feel left intact, but only for flams. Bass, you can see right here, it's a little bit late. That one's pretty close. It's harder to tell with bass. If it is edited, it's not much. It's just a little bit closer. And then guitars, it doesn't look like it is much at all. That's pretty close. But yeah, they've left a lot of the feel intact. It's just the drums. The drums are dead on. So I am going to have to give this one gridded because the drums are completely gridded. Next, we have Arch Spire Drone Corpse Aviator mixed by Dave Otero. So this one's very different than Angels and Airwaves. A lot faster, a little bit more technical, some would say. One interesting thing about this is that we've got MIDI for all of the drums, and that's not because the drums are programmed, but because you can use these to trigger samples and gates. So that's super tight right there. You can see these are dead on. No flaming, just right on. You can see right there as well. But then when we get to this faster stuff, look at that, that is not at all gridded. So it looks like anything faster than like a 16th note is gonna be getting, it's letting it do its own thing. You see this little th thwip here? And that's not, that's not aligned in any. How's the bass looking? So we can look at this little fill here. Oh yeah, that's, that one's aligned. Looks like the middle hit is on. That one's on. No, nope, it's a little off. These are moved, but probably not by much. And that's not edited. That's very, it's very loose and natural. We can look at the fast guitar bits. Let's see how those are. So this first note, the left one's a little bit ahead. This one, 
again. The right guitar is a little bit later every time. This well, this one's pushed back a little bit, so it's definitely not perfect. These are not super super edited. You can really hear it here. Those are not perfect. We got 30 seconds here. Those are pretty close, but not exactly perfect. You can really tell when you look at the MIDI, especially those little fast things. It, it's obviously edited, yes, but I think it might be a little bit less than Angel's Nair Waves, which is not what you would usually expect. But I think this one is actually a little bit more natural than Angels and Airwaves, because Angels and Airwaves was right on every time. While this one has way more notes, there's a little bit of leeway. Okay, now we've got Arch Echo. These guys are more guitar metal. This is the main chorus riff. We can check out these kicks. They're not exactly on. There's a lot more feel on this than either of the other two songs. Like there's probably some editing going on, but not a lot. That is leaving a lot of stuff intact, especially like right here. Like that is, that is a ton. Looking at bass, the bass is played incredibly tightly. Right here, everything is pretty close. But the guitars aren't exactly right. Like this little transient here and this one right here a little bit a little bit off, you can see right there it's the same thing. And then it pulls back ahead there. So there, this one's a more obvious example. This one's late, this one's early, this one's early. And yeah, definitely pretty natural. I mean, the guitar and bass might've been edited or they might've just been played this, this tightly. And I'm unsure too much how much they did with how much they did with the drums. So I'm gonna say that this one is going in mostly natural. Yeah, even that solo, there's, there might be a couple notes here or there but that are nudged, but I'm pretty sure that's just how he's playing it. He's just that fantastic. Okay, next up we've got Obscura. This is an interesting one. This is very tech, but it it also had a really, really natural vibe to it, but that may just be the mix. All right, so we'll start with the kick drum. Let's see how we're at. Damn near dead on. No, it's, just, it's straight up dead on. How are these snares? Gridded snares. Double kick, a gridded. I'm gonna guess that this was done with a kick pad. This sounds like a... Yeah, it's all trigger kick. There's no kick bleed in the snare mic. I would imagine that is how it's done. Bass, more natural in the drums, yes. It is looking like it's there's a bit of editing, unless he's just like insanely tight. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit off. Yeah, that might just be how he's playing. Really hard to tell with these guitars. I don't know if there's something we can really maybe take this part. Okay, yeah, we can see notes on this on that little run. And you can see this little part here. This is this is where your pick attacks happen, and this is where notes are gonna overlap. That's why you're getting this little waviness here, because you're interrupting the note with the pick and the next note. But these are this is really, really tight. This is stupidly tight. If it's not edited, but it's like right there, that's a little bit pull that back. If you want to put that there. That's a cut right there. Yeah, I would imagine right there, there's a fade. It's a lot less natural than I expected, but it just might be that this mix is, it's like so raw sounding that it makes up for it. And that's, that's pretty crazy. That's, it's, it's up there. Yeah, it's, that's gridded. There's, there's less variance in this than there was in Arch Spire, 100%. I think that's even above Angels of the Airwaves. That's, that's pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Next, we've got uh, Suicide Silence. Uh, this was done with Machine. 
This is an interesting one because I believe the album before this one, The Cleansing, I think that was Tool Madsen. I might be wrong, but I think that album was recorded live in the studio. And this one definitely looks like it isn't. Machine's doing his weird left right kick thing here. I can, I can mix these a little bit, Go left around that, right on that. So. So he likes his kicks to sound. Let's see how we're lining up. Dead on, dead on, dead on, dead on, dead on, dead on. And if you wanna see how he's doing this, he records in Logic. If you wanna see his process for editing, we have a video on our channel called, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but the thumbnail's like, you can edit drums in Logic, and you can. And yeah, I used Logic for a long time. You definitely can. There's a Pro Tools type workflow. It requires a little bit of finagling, but you definitely can. Let's see how this snare is lining up. That is interesting. That is so much dynamic variation. This one's a little late, but the first one was dead on. Oh, this is a click. That's not helpful. Don't look at that. All right, yeah, that there's variation here. These are not exactly on. There's a little bit of flaming. Are they flaming exactly the same each time? No, this one's a little bit more late. This one's a little bit up there. This one's similar. I don't know if it's it's catching up at any point either. It's always a little late. Oh wait, no, here, here we've got up, we've got up. Oh, that's pretty crazy. All right, let's see uh, the guitars. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, here we can see this isn't dead on at all. Right here, bass is late, guitars are a little early. The guitars look like they might have been edited to each other. They're very, very similar, but it might just be the cuts and the breakdown. It's also hard to tell because we don't have DIs. Even the bass sounds like... Yeah, the bass has a sans amp on it. It's called bass sans. Yeah, these aren't... These aren't gridded, definitely. So this is a little bit more feelsy. I'd say it's a little bit more feelsy than Archspire because the snares are so are more off, but it's it's not as natural as Arch Echo. That's fun. That's fun. Let's see who we are with Under Oath. All right, this is Desperate Times, Desperate Measures with David Bendith. Let's see what we've got here. Already sounds great. It's like a boxy sounding snare on Nice Man. I like that. Snare not definitely on. These are that's definitely a, a big flam that's just left natural. That's pretty close, pretty close, pretty close. Little ahead on that one. Little ahead, little ahead. It's not perfect. It's not grid. It's maybe 90%, maybe 80%. That flam is a little late, the whole thing. And then if we look at that, that flam is less than a, a uh, little bit less than a 30 second. I'm right back to the on it. Let's check out, there's a part later where things get weird. We got two drums happening here. We got two drum sets. You're gonna hear a lot more flaming and somehow it just works. So yeah, these are definitely not super gridded, but they're edited enough to sound. There's no mistakes, you know? Let's pull up this bass. All right, how's this looking? That's pretty close, that's pretty close. Up there, that one, no, not edited. Oh yeah, we're, we got a lot of feel on this bass. We got a lot of feel. It is. Yeah, we're doing a lot of fun stuff here. And same with these guitars. They are definitely. Make sure these left and right hear them a little bit better. Yeah, you can feel that is almost completely intact. Maybe there's some cuts here and there, but this one's gonna have a lot of feel. That one's pretty feels it compared to Arch Echo. I think they're I think they're edited about the same. I think the playing is the only thing that's really, really the differentiator there. Where Under Oath is a is a slower, more rocky band, and Arch Echo, uh, they're they're trying to be virtuoso guitarists and everything, so they want to be right right on that a little bit tighter. This we got a little bit more looseness. So this is the loosest one we've experienced so far, and even that you could tell is still editing is happening. All right, next up we've got Bloodbath. All right, this song is called Zombie Inferno by Bloodbath, mixed on Nailo Mix by Lawrence McCrory. No MIDI, did give us DIs though. Already you can tell. Look at those kicks. Look at that, it's madness. And they're not like the exactly the same off either. They're really close, but this is all, this is all playing. 
Yeah, he's pulling the groove there. That snare is real close, but it's not on the kick. And look at this, look at that right there. Big fill, big fill, way ahead, right on, ahead, ahead, yeah. And then the kicks aren't exact either. This, I, I would not be surprised if there were maybe a couple comps, but no quantizing. Even these guitars, look at that, that one's boom, boom, boom. They, they got three guitars on this and then the bass, and these are not hitting at the exact same time. Very, very close. This is all natural feel right here. It's completely... Look at that little DB right there. Snare out. Oh, oh, pretty close on these kicks, actually. Oh my goodness. No, that looks like we got a little bit. We got a little bit. Very surprising. Snare doesn't look like it's being touched, but that kick right on, right on. Oh, a little ahead. I don't think this is natural. These fills though. Look at that. That's crazy. I mean, you can hear it though. It sounds great, but that is not a gridded performance. So a lot of this stuff is left intact. This is super natural, but there might be some some little th stuff. It's really hard to tell. Jump to the end, see where we're at the end. That's pretty close, pretty close. And this little deep beat, that's a little late. This is the most natural, but it's still... <sighs> it might have some, but it's super, super, super subtle. And I don't want to exactly say there's none. The fills are just... There's no way these fills are edited. Like, you're not pulling those notes there if you're doing it on purpose. You know, that's that's all the drummer. So I don't know. I could put it in virtually no editing. We'll see how it goes. Next up, we've got Sleeping With Sirens. This is with Chris Crummett. This is If You Can't Hang. It's actually my favorite song from them. Right on it. Right on it. Right on it. Very, very good. Well, let's see. Let's check out how his fills are looking. Pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. We don't have DIs. As you can see, there's still a little bit of leeway in the guitars and bass. Okay, there you can definitely see those variants, but that's a softer part. You would want variants there. Are these on? Nope, there's a little bit of variance right there. Even that, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, I think we're safe to say this one's gridded. Absolutely. Absolutely gridded. And more notes than Angels and Airwaves. Yeah, I think it's a little bit below Obscura. Uh, up there with Angels and Airwaves, that's a, it's definitely, definitely gridded. All right, now we're gonna move on to Fallout Boy. This is Lake Effect Kid with Sean O'Keefe. All right, let's see what we got here. Right on, right on, a little ahead. So there's a little bit of, a little bit of variance. It's probably edited, but it's, it's given its, its space. Probably edited on the bass too. I wouldn't doubt. All right, we can see this part definitely. There's, yeah, you can see. This guitar could be moved back a little bit for that part, but it's not. That's a little ahead. Definitely ahead. Oh, it pulls ahead. It's pulling out a feel and it goes right back to it. Okay. So there's a little bit, little bits of variance, but still very, still very edited. Let's say some feel but probably at the top of that list maybe a little bit <sighs> no it's i think it's more feelsy than suicide dance or arch spire i think there's a little bit more variance in the notes next up we got mashuga monstro city he's got two kick drums that's always always fun and i am pretty certain that this whole thing is recorded live and i wouldn't doubt if there's no edits 
but the kick drums I'm pretty sure are also recorded separately. Is that on? Yeah. Wow. Okay, more. I think this is super natural. I think they, you know, it's recorded all live in the same room. I think this is just how tight these guys are. And nothing's sticking out as, as super gridded at all. So I think this might be, yeah, virtually no editing. It's just super tight. They're just super tight. All right, Periphery. Prayer Position by Periphery. Mixed by Nolly. Fantastic sounding record. Amazing musicians. Let's see what they're doing on this. Get the behind the scenes. All right, let's look at this kick. Where is that? Uh, This is in triplets, isn't it? Yeah, change that grid to a triplet grid, probably 16 triplets. Yeah, right there. Okay, that's dead on, dead on, dead on, late, dead on, pretty dead on, dead on, little late. Okay, there's definitely editing going on here. This is not a natural amount unless he is a robot. And I know he's not a robot because he's got too much feel. It's too much of a feelsy guy, that mad helper. So yeah, we can look at this. That is too, too tight. Let's see if we get anything weird off these, uh, off the guitar or the bass. Um, no, bass is a little ahead, right here. Bump, bump, that's, this one's eerily on. Little ahead, little ahead. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if there's any other types of riffs we can pick out in the song. Oh, get fun. Great, my god, that snare, that raw snare. God, that just feels great. That just, oh. One of my favorite snare tones is just anything that Matt Halpern does. The way he abuses those rim shots is fantastic. I think these are, I think these might be edited. I think the bass might be also edited, but not like crazy, like he's loosely thrown it in place. Maybe there's a couple notes that were off, but I think he's pulling back into position. But it's really hard to tell, and it's even harder to tell with what's going on with these guitars. Let me get a little, little clip game. Maybe they're not. It's not supernatural though. It's not. It's, it's really. There's really not a lot of feel on here. It's very, very gritted. But I think a lot of the feel comes with just the dynamics, the fun, the fun little grooves and dynamics. Oh, that's a cut for sure. You can see that cut right there. Happens to the best of us. Where is Periphery going? Oh, it's going up there. It's going up there with Angels and Airwaves. Gridded. Absolutely. And it sounds all the better for it. Decapitated is what we're looking at next. So we have Just a Cigarette by Decapitated. This is mixed by David Castillo. This is a really interesting project. There's, there's kick twos and kick outs and there's a bunch of kicks going on all over the place. It looks like there might be two comps of drums that are kind of cut together and left in the session. Uh, two kick drums, right and left. And these are, right on, let's take our triplet grid back. 16th, 16th, let's get some 32nd here. Yeah, the snare's not super gritted. They got feel left on there. And these kicks are pretty close to done. It looks like 90, 95%. See, like that's a little ahead, but I think it's 
a little bit more than natural. Yeah, we're at, with these snares being up this 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 high, I don't think they're hitting the, the kick this perfectly, or this robotically, should I say. I think we just listen to those. Yeah, it's dead on. But the snare is not dead on. So it still still gives you a really natural feel. Let's see what's going on with this bass. Transients are not exactly the same every time. Can't tell with guitars because it's another one that doesn't have DIs. Let's see, let's, fi let's find another riff that's not just blast beats or kick. Let's see, how are we looking on that? Grid, grid, grid. Okay, so it looks like anything above a 16th is, uh, or 16th and above are getting gridded. 30 seconds are a little bit not, like a little bit left in place. It's probably these. Kick right, kick. Okay, there we go. Let's see how those are aligning. Not perfect, not perfect at all. See, as soon as we get to the 30 seconds. What is it though, are they? It still feels like 90% they're just kind of pulled back. Yeah, so it looks like these are recorded separately too. All right, let's figure out where we're at with this one. It's got some feel, definitely. It's not the craziest thing. It's got a similar thing happening to Suicide Silence, but I think a little bit more. So we'll throw it right behind Suicide Silence. Next, we have Cephalic Carnage. The song is... Dying Will Be the Death of Me, mixed by Dave Otero. This is an older one. It's an old session that he was able to pull up. And while I was setting this up, I realized definitely a unique one. And that's because there's no click. This is, this is one of the no clicks. And if we look at that, that is all natural. That is, this is some natural variance right here. So we're looking at all that. So we've got the DIs and the bass and then the kick and the snare. And we're seeing a lot of natural variation. Guitars up here, guitars up here. Bass is right here, snares right there. Kicks are back and front up here. We can safely say that this is going in the no click category. Easy. Next we've got Lightwork. I believe the song is called Lightworker by Devin Townsend. All right, let's 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 take a listen to this one. It's got a fretless bass in it, which is always fun. It's got multiple basses, multiple guitars. I believe there are different drum parts in this too. There's some, there's some MIDI, but I don't think it's lining up in my session right now. Here we go. Yeah, Morgan drums right there. So this kick right here, dead on. Bass, kind of right with it. Uh, not perfect, not perfect, but the kick is the kick is perfect. Yeah, this is not edited right there, but then this seems to be. And this is all just a stereo stem of the drums. He really liked how the mix was already from the drummer. So he's like, just give me a stereo. Sounds great. And it does. That's very edited, very clean, very, very tight. Yeah, even the hi-hat, all the hi-hat clicks right on. You really can't do much with an acoustic guitar. And then, yeah, this bass is doing whatever it wants. It's having a great time. It's it's hard to tell with these electric guitars. I think once we get back from the metal drums. Drums are gridded. Absolutely. How are these guitars looking? It's really hard to tell only the overdriven guitars. I think there might be. I, 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 really hard because it's just a slow part. I mean, it's not like doing any chugs or anything. But we would be able to tell with bass. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah, if, if this is edited, it's subtle on the bass. It's not crazy. There's definitely room, but these drums are gridded. Absolutely. Even the stereo track of drums is just gridded. 
which is really cool because this is not what you would expect from this recording. This is such an open, weird, big orchestral thing. And then it's just got slammed drums. Love it. Up there with angels and airwaves. Gridded. All right, now we're going to check out Labyrinthian by Humanity's Last Breath. That is this month's Nail the Mix with Buster out of home. So we've got this open here. This has a uh, shell MIDI as well, so we can see exactly what the shells are doing, and they're pretty fucking close. I don't want to hear the piano notes. But if there's not even really humanization, a little bit here and there, you know? So when you look at these waveforms, we're going to see nothing. And let's check out these guitars. These things are very close, very close to each other, if nothing else. We're seeing a lot of cuts because that is absurd. You're not going to want to do that in one take. You're going to want to definitely punch that in and then we get the little, little fun things happening here. Even our, our bass is hitting every single time dead on the grid, 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 right there, right there. Especially for these breakdowny parts. Let's see if there's anything less breakdowny. Oh no! Sorry, I forgot. This is humanity. Last breath. There's nothing that's not a breakdown. Oh, that sounds great. This is all hidden. This is all. This is the most gridded thing we've look, we've looked at. Because even the guitar and bass. This is the first one I think where the guitar and bass are edited this closely. I think you can really, really hear it in the final product because you want it to be stupidly heavy, stupidly in your face, especially when it's doing so many weird percussive elements on the guitar and on the bass, like, like that. And then these little things just straight chopped up, you know, just give it something like that. Yeah. By far the most gridded. Next up, Animals is Leaders. Oh, this is a good one. This one's very instrumental. I think these guys might be some of the most respected musicians we've got in this lineup where they are just known for being musicians and musicians, you know? A little bit ahead. A little bit ahead right there. Fantastic. It's close. It's really, really close. But it's not perfect. This is 90, 95% there. And again, this might this might not be edited. This might just be how good he is. Garska is a machine. It's it's all really really close though. I wouldn't doubt there's a little bit. There's a little bit of movement on that. We look at the bass DI. Yeah, see where those guitars are, in, are lining up. Yeah, it's all it's all super, super tight, but it's not exact. It's not on the grid. These are off. These are off. That it's tons and tons of feel. This is this is pretty natural. I'm not certain that it is a hundred percent natural. It looks like things could have been moved. But this is giving you a good reference. If you want to be like this kind of band, you want to be within this amount of the grid. This is where these guys are living. Look at how look at how ahead that is. Look at how ahead that is. Look at where these guitars are. Things are hitting. The, things are they're close enough. Like and then we're real zoomed in too. You can kind of get an idea of tempo based on the actual waveforms of the kick. But yeah, these guys are close, but they're they're not on it. You know, it's not it, it's not dead on. But it makes you want to bob your head. You're in it. You're into it. So I'm gonna say that's mostly natural. Hit my eh. Now I'm gonna put it under virtually no editing. I I am not certain. No, mostly natural. Mostly natural. I, I'm. It's hard with these. It's hard with these ones because they could just be that tight. But I think we're all we're, we're learning what the limits are. I really wanted to give myself a frame of reference for what are the most natural sounding bands doing. How far are they from each other? From the grid? What are the craziest? most edited bands doing like i think the stuff i've worked on a lot of it i've sometimes gridded harder than humanity's last breath i've slammed it into the grid it is virtually edm and sometimes that's what you want but not, none of these guys are going above that that is our upper limit and even then there's still some the guitars aren't perfect they're not exactly on it they're close on some parts but there's there's still some variation okay here we've got deaf heaven's honeycomb with Jack Shirley. This one 
I think you can guess. I think you can guess what's going on with this one, just based on if you know this band, you know what they're doing here. There's no click. We ain't got click on this. So let's let's take a look at how good these du these dudes are. Yeah, no click at all. These guys are doing their own thing the whole time. You can take a look at exactly how much variance is in these kick kits. This is what a fantastic drummer's kick hits will look like, not to a click, unedited. You're gonna see some, this is, these are closer. These are a little bit further, these are a little closer, but it sounds great. It sounds, you know, that's what they wanna sound like. But not every band can pull this off. Not every band can do this sound. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's some super fast stuff with no click. You also may notice I accidentally had my bass to the right. There we go. There we go. That's a little bit more natural. <laughs> a little bit more uh, normal sounding. Yeah, great. That's another that's that's another no clicker right there. Boom. These two guys live in the dream. Live in the dream, just going for it, doing whatever they want to do. This one's near and dear to my heart. This is Redneck by Lamb of God. I used to love Lamb of God. I, I used to watch the DVD that came with this album. The deluxe version of this album had a DVD of them recording this. That's kind of what got me into recording music. And, uh, you know, now we're here. So this is older. This is Machine. He's doing his weird kick thing. We got a right kick and a left kick, but he's also got a center kick on the main hits. But let's look at this. We got that dead on, dead. Oh, that was a little bit off. A little bit late. Dead on though, dead on, dead on. One thing that's interesting about this recording is I believe they did all of the shells separate. So you're not gonna hear any cymbal bleed in this snare mic, but you are gonna hear some, you do hear some toms. Cause they did all the shells by themselves. And if you go to the cymbal track, which exists here somewhere, you don't hear any, you, there, there's no drums cause they recorded shells and then just cymbals. And that gives them a lot more options. And it, I think it just sounds cool the way it all worked out on this. So we can tell that the drums are very gridded. Or we also have the, the MIDI. No, that's just click. I gotta stop doing that. Here we got a little fill thing, that fill. Left pretty natural. You know, he's not, he's not gridding that completely. You don't want those little things to be perfectly gridded or it's gonna sound just too robotic. So we're learning that today. Keep, keep your little flippy flappies, your little flips. Don't grid those. You don't need 30 second notes gridded. We're mostly doing a lot of just kicks. Not a big blast beat band. Uh, let's check out the bass. No, we're not gating a lot here, even though this is like a break. This is like this is like a breakdown part, but we're not gating a ton. We're not clipping it up like that, you know. And let's see, are these lined up for to do this? See, I would probably put it like that if I were to 100% it. So these are not 100%. We can take these guitars. Let's see where we live in here. If I do that. Yeah, these aren't 100%. Yeah, these are living in their own space. So guitars, very natural. Drums, very gridded. And a, a unique recording method. So I'm going to say some feel. But I think these might still be tighter than Arch Spire and a little bit tighter than the Suicide Sounds, but that's also because we don't have blast beats with a 30 second note. I'm struggling to find a nice snare fill. Boom, boom, boom. No, this is, this is super tight. This is super, super tight. So yeah, definitely, even though these are both recorded by machine, this one's a little bit tighter, a little bit more grid, and I love it. Oh my God. Even just the DI sounds so cool. Okay, next we have Left to Suffer. This is last month uh, with Matt Thomas. He's a URM subscriber. Now he's doing it big. 
Okay, kicks, 100%. Snares, 100%. Just 100%. But these guitars... Uh, close. Again, if I, were to, if I were to pull these perfectly to the grid, they're not going to look like this. It's, they're, they're pretty natural. They're pretty left where they want to be. See, like... So yeah, slip that there, slip that there. This I would put up here, like that. See, so yeah, these are not perfect. Same with the bass. For... Bass could be. But as you see, like as soon as I did that, see how much more straight it, it just sounds like. A little bit less energy. This one, we got some feel. Actually, it might be tighter because I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any notes that are not 100% of the grid. So this is looking like absolutely gridded. It's just guitar and bass and stuff. Um, even these fills, 100%. This one, but doom, ah, that's a little bit up there. No, oh, that's gridded. We're at gridded. A little bit more than periphery. Because even the, the fills are. Now we're at Leprous. The Price, mixed by Jens Bogren. Um, this is an interesting one because we've been working on the how it's done with Jens Bogren lately. And so I have been just getting the most insanely deep insight on how to do everything. So I'm just going to guess that this one is going to be very, very natural because I and I've seen his editing process and it's not about gridding anything. He, he wants that that energy. But he's massive on comping, loves comping. Yeah, so that's way out, kind of on, kind of on, up. Yeah, we can look at like right here, like what's going on here. That's great. It also doesn't help that it's all triplet. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. This is this is tighter than I expected. Guitars are doing their own thing. Bass is a little later. Maybe let's take it a little bit later. Let's see what we're doing with the half parts. I got this fill. Oh yeah. I think this might have edits, but at the same time, so much of it is left where it needs to be. So much of it. So this one mostly natural, if not virtually no editing, but I'm also biased because I know his process. I know he does edit, but it's just so subtle. Super, super little things. Upside Down by Jason Richardson, mixed by Taylor Larson. All right, the drums on this are Luke Holland. Already, 100%, 100%. A little off, 100, 100, little 100, even these little things, da, 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 da. And these guitars are, you can see the DIs. He is just a fantastic player, completely not at all edited as far as I can tell, especially these little runs. Like, look at that. That's all blind. They recorded it and they said it's good. They moved on. Fantastic. These drums, gridded. There's some gritty drums. That was a little bit off. How are these breakdowns? Right on, right on. Close, pretty close, pretty close. I would imagine these are probably moved just a little bit. So, gridded, absolutely. Is it above? Probably, probably a little bit more from periphery. Around that, around that. Okay, Memphis May Fire with Kellen McGregor. Song, Blood and Water. All right, so we've got MIDI for this as well. We also have bass MIDI. So let's see where we're living on these. Very close to the grid, dead on, dead on. All of this, absolutely dead on. And let's see the guitars. Let's see what the guitars be doing. Definitely edited, definitely. A little off, a little off, a little off. 
Okay, we're falling, we're falling off the grid now. More feelsy. Yeah, a lot of feel here. Uh, the grid is, or the base is super, super gridded though. What's interesting is seeing how the, even though the base MIDI is super dead on, some of these notes are a little bit not where you'd expect them to be. It's a little ahead. <laughs> So I believe he actually is just using straight MIDI for the drums, though, for the shells at least, and the cymbals are alive. So I'm gonna have to give this one up there with the grittiest, right up there. Absolutely. Nickelback. All right, we've got San Quentin by Nickelback, produced and mixed by Chris Baysford. All right, so pretty simple beat. Let's see. Kick looking nearly 100% on the grid, unless the snare is, which seems to be a common trend. Nearly 100% on drums. Bass might also be. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it's looking like we got the gritty on this one. Yep. I, I think this might have to be edited. Interesting. All right, let's see what the guitars are doing. Okay, so guitars are not perfect either. You can see they've got a little bit of variance here and here. Definitely letting them kind of do their thing. Here, everything's kind of hitting at the same time. I doubt those strums are moved. Those might be, but it's still like, it's about the same as everything else. So it really comes down to these drums. Duh, 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 duh. Super metal, you know, what Nickelback is known for. Gridded, absolutely. And you know what, bass, I think bass is gridded. Be up there. Next we have Bend by Volumes, mixed by Daniel Bronstein. Let's see what our kicks are looking like. Up here, we got 100, 100, 100, 100. Are these real drums? Let's figure that out. Doesn't seem like it. Does not seem like it. Seems like we got MIDI going on here. Let's see a MIDI track, though. Yeah. Let's check out what's going on their bass. Not dead on, not dead on, not dead on. Okay. Rhythm guitars. That might have been moved, but it's got a lot of feel still. Yeah, you can see right here, they're playing the same thing, both by high notes, but you can see exactly where the variance is, and that's all left in. It's all left in. You don't want to move them closer than that. So it's gridded. It's another it's another gridded one. I mean, it's, it's fake drums. Less than Obscura, or around the same as Obscura, because I think the guitars are touched maybe a little bit less. Hard to say, though. Really hard to say. And then lastly, we've got Spirit Box, also by Daniel Brownstein. Brownstein. That should not be so difficult. Spirit Box, also by Daniel Brownstein. It's our last one. Let's see what we got here. Boom, boom. These are a little bit humanized. I think this is also MIDI drums, though. Yeah, that's Superior Drummer right there. How's our bass looking? Guitars are really tight. These are really, really tight guitars. Late on that but they're super in time with each other at the very least. Great programming. I think he might've used an E-kit, but sounds awesome. Also incredibly gridded, even more so than this. So we're up there and there we have it. Most things are just straight to the grid. Most of this, almost half of this is more to the grid, but also almost none of the guitars are gridded. No guitar and no bass is to the grid. They're mostly left pretty natural. You want to leave a lot of feel. So that's it. That's, that's huge. I have definitely been over editing my guitar. My guitar most of the time looks way worse than, than the most gridded of the stuff we just looked at, which is absolutely crazy. And you, you're also looking at the stuff down here is even when it's like pretty natural, it's you can tell where it's living in terms of the, in, in relation to the grid. 
which is fantastic. Even the no click stuff, you can see what what it looks like, where what the ballpark should be for a professional sound. So I love that. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. And if you want to learn editing techniques, we've got a bunch of fast tracks. A couple months ago, we just put out uh, editing drums with feel with John Douglas. He's going to show you how to get those little variances in there, make it still sound natural. But this, I think, really really blew my mind a lot more than I thought it would. And I think it's gonna affect my productions a lot from here. And I, I love that, I love this. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. What were your favorite feels? What times would you say it's okay to go more gritted than this or even more natural than this? And happy mixing. See you next time. I'm Ryan Wolanski with URM Academy. Have a great day.